guys, you are watching the In Third Person comic book show. I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com, a website about video games, board games, comic books, and more. Today on the show, we are talking about the intersection between two of my loves, board games and comic books. There are a lot of choices out there right now, and a lot of them are actually really good. And I happen to own a bunch of them because, well, I'm a fan of both and let's start this off i've got this giant stack of board games and card games dice games here on the side and there's a couple on the floor that i grabbed at the last minute which sort of kind of count but let's let's get into it so the very first one on the list is also the very first one i ever played this is the dc comics deck building game from cryptozoic this one if you are familiar with Dominion, which is a very popular deck building game, kind of started that particular genre. And in that particular game, you used your cards to build up a kingdom, and there was a set pile of cards in the middle that you could draw from, and everyone was drawing from, and you were trying to build the best set in order to get the most land to get the most points. And this game uh, very much follows that particular format where... You are all playing as different superheroes, so some people are... One person might be Superman or Batman or The Flash. Let me open this up. I wasn't planning on opening these up, but... So there are some people like Batman, Cyborg, Aquaman. Uh, Wonder Woman's in here too. Let me give her a shout because, you know, she's one of my favorites. Wonder Woman as well. Oh, just fumbled all these cards here. You all take take on different roles and you are drawing from a center pool of cards like you want to get like the Batmobile and the utility belt and Aquaman's trident and all these different weapons and other ally characters to try and take down the bad guys so there's a stack of bad guy cards like Ra's al Ghul, the Joker, Captain Cold and the whole point of the game is to take all those guys out and once you do the person with the most points wins Oh yeah, I'm not going to go talk like super in-depth on all these games. There's a lot of games here. So I'm just going to like graze these at a high level. Uh, DC deck building game. I think that... Oh, let me just dip, get the box back here. Uh, this is a really good starting point. Like if you're a big fan of the comics but haven't really played any sort of designer board games, this one's a good place to start because it's not all that hard to learn. And it moves by pretty quickly. Once you get a feel for it, you can play this in like half an hour. And it's a pretty solid start. I guess my beef with it is that the company that makes this game actually designed this as a generic uh, board game engine. So they have other games that use the exact, largely the same framework that play the same. So here's one of them, the Street Fighter deck building game where... The rules are largely the same, so this, it does feel kind of cookie cutter in a way, and thematically, like, there's some weird things where you kind of have to kick a punch, or why is certain bad guy cards helping out, helping you beat other bad guys. So thematically, it's not as tight, but as a game, it's pretty fun. Uh, so if you're looking to get a little more into the DC deck building game, there's a couple of other expansions out there, such as... Well, this one's a standalone game, Heroes Unite. Uh, the big difference is the main set of heroes is different, and also there are new cards to draw from. I haven't actually played this yet. We've had this for months. We just haven't gotten around to playing it. And also the game I meant to show during our Fan Expo wrap-up, this one's an actual expansion. Side note, this one you can play by itself. This one you cannot. This is the Crisis expansion, which allows you to play cooperatively versus the main game where you are competing against each other. Alright, so that's the DC game. Let's keep this moving. Street Fighter game, we can get out of here. This one, eh, um, just a little bit of a tangent. If you want a Street Fighter-like card game, go play Yomi, which is somewhere back there. Uh, wait, nope, there. Oh, here. The one close to that one. That's the game. We'll talk. If I ever do the in-third-person board game show, We'll talk about that one in more detail. Next on the list, I just dropped a box. We'll grab that in a sec. 
Next on the list is one of my favorites. This is Legendary, which, as you can tell, stars a bunch of the Marvel people. So, unlike the DC game, this one's a lot more elaborate. There is a giant board that comes with the game, and it kind of strays quite a bit from the traditional deck-building formula. So in it, you guys are recruiting superheroes to try and fight the bad guy. And the bad guy might be Magneto, could be Apocalypse, it could be, yeah, just standard Marvel supervillains. And they have a plot, and there are different cards that indicate what the plot is, and it's the the plots act as the winning conditions for the bad guy. Yes, you guys could all play together and you can all lose in this particular game. And so you need to stop the bad guy from completing that goal. And along the way, there are going to be bad guys that come across the city and you have to fight them off with your cards and you're trying to find the right balance of keeping bad guys out of the city while hitting the mastermind. And it's, it's pretty challenging. I... I don't win very often playing with it, and it's a little complex, but this is a game that I love a lot. There's a ton of different expansions, and because of the the plot aspect, there's a ton of different ways to play this game. So you can it doesn't feel the same twice each time you give it a go. Downsides of this, this one definitely more complex than the DC Comics deck building game. Uh, setup kind of sucks, so there's two different reasons why setup sucks. When you get the game for the first time, they don't sort the cards out in a way that makes sense. Uh, if you, you're going into this cold, you just have this whole mess of cards and you have no idea how to sort these. This took a few hours just to sort the cards before I even started learning how to play the game. Um, once you know how to play the game and you have all the cards set up in a particular way, it still takes 15 to 20 minutes just to lay everything out. Is it worth it, though, for all that extra effort? I think so, because this game is fantastic. And if you want more of the Legendary experience, you can also grab the Dark City expansion, which has some Marvel Knights characters and some more X-Men, more bad guys. There's the Spider-Man Paint the Town Red, the smaller expansion. I'm sorry, the glare from my spotlight is <laughs> messing up some of these boxes. So there's a Spider-Man one, there's, this is the box I dropped, Ugh. a Fantastic Four one, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Fantastic Four, I really like these cards, and that's the other thing, right, like, if, if you like the Marvel Universe and maybe you don't like specific parts of it, it's still alright because the cards themselves are really cool, the artwork on them is great, and they provide different gameplay benefits or challenges to overcome that are cool regardless of the character they represent. And most recently, Legendary Villains, which is a standalone game where you play as the bad guys fighting the good guys. So if you want to be super creative, you can mix everything from this game with everything in the other game to create, you know, your own Civil Wars, Secret Wars, um, any Avengers vs. X-Men, whatever you want. Mix the good guys, bad guys, any way you like, and just go nuts. So that's legendary. And the next on the list is where'd that box go? All right. So <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Marvel Dice Masters Avengers vs X Men. So I talked about this one on the Fan Expo wrap up a little bit. We'll talk about it a little bit more. This is a two-player competitive dice game where you are drafting every everyone comes into the battle with their own set of heroes so maybe i'm gonna take let me just grab some cards off the top here i'm gonna take angel and this particular version of beast and i'm gonna face off against your captain america and dr doom weird team but whatever <laughs> and each character is represented by certain dice let me grab some dice here. So this one, that's a Reed Richards Fantastic Four die. This one is, oh, I don't know who that is, right off the top of my head. <laughs> this one with the big A on it, Captain America. And you're using your, your generic sidekick dice to earn resources to go and draft these guys, and then they go fight each other. 
and whoever kills the mastermind, which would be you or me, wins. This is a pretty fun dice game. It moves very quickly. Once you learn it, the, the learning curve on it's a little weird, and I'll explain why. There is this, this, right? So this is the guide for where all your dice should go and how they should move. They only give you one of these, and it can be confusing to understand, like, okay, I roll these dice now. Where on this chart do they go? Okay, I meant they had them fight. If it came with two of these, and ideally in some sort of mat, uh, that would help a lot. But otherwise, like, great game, and you can collect these. You can buy the boosters, which if you can find a place that sells them at MSRP, they're only a dollar, and you get two dice and two cards. It is a lot of fun to play, and a lot of fun to collect if you are into the collecting aspect of games like Magic the Gathering or anything like that. And two extra ones. I know we're running long on this one, but it is a subject that I'm very passionate about. Uh, that kind of count, sort of, kind of. Um, extra shoutouts for these. A Game of Thrones, which of course uh, started out with the books. There's the TV show, which is wildly popular that I've hardly ever watched. And there are graphic novels for these as well. I have no idea how popular the graphic novels are. But because of that, I'm throwing this out there on the show this is a super hardcore board game average playtime three to four hours uh probably the most complex game i've ever played but if you're willing to put in the time if you've got experience in other board games this is fantastic cannot recommend this game enough i don't even i don't know the fiction all that well but as a strategy game amazing and one other one i have to grab from the floor here and this one's kind of cheating uh, they, this one is the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game by Paizo. Um, it's a role-playing game, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, except that this particular, the card game, Rise of the Rune Lords, is all based in cards. You don't need a DM to go and rehearse and play out the story. It all plays out through these cards, and... It's actually a fairly straightforward card game. Like, I was super intimidated by it at first, but I actually really like it. And there's a... You can buy expansions to further build on the story and your characters. You keep your gear so that you just get stronger and stronger over time. And it's it's really good. I wish I had played more of this. We're Steph and I are going to play more this Sunday. And the reason I'm throwing this out there, there is a Pathfinder comic. We did read the first one. We bought the first one and have it, and it's not that great. But <laughs> it does exist, and I think warrants this to be mentioned on this particular show. So Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, this one's really good as well. So that is it for this edition of the In Third Person Comic Book Show. I'm looking to talk about the comic book experience beyond comic books as well. Um, partially because there's so many different touch points that comics touch, and um, it's getting a little harder for me to buy comic books because of this whole wedding planning stuff. So um, I'm, I'm looking for other ways to keep the show going. Uh, I'll go into more in depth on these board games at some point. Maybe it's not a comic book show. It's the the in third person board game show. I don't know. If you'd be interested in that, let me know. If you enjoyed this episode, give me that thumbs up on YouTube. You can subscribe to the channel on youtube.com slash jet in third person. And check out the website, YouTube in third person.com for more articles, videos, and more. And if you're looking for like detailed reviews on all of these, I have written reviews for pretty much all of the games I mentioned today. So definitely check that out if you're interested in anything that you just see you've seen here. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you come back for the next one. See you later.